today dr arun k shankar principal scientist from crida come over here and stay with us for today's evening lecture i am really happy sir you are the one of the alumni of tnau and uh, we happen to be there in the same pg hostel and uh, so he have the long memory about tnau and also he traveled a very long experience uh, in the physiology maybe the your head of the department introduced the speaker and uh, we are fortunate that uh, whenever we request for any of the external uh, thesis evaluation or any of the meeting whenever we ask most of the alumni will respond and the same way as uh, arun is always keep in touch with the physiology department and we help us for many evaluation process and also the uh, many of the student interactions so in that uh, the department of physiology uh, is really fortunate enough to have him today and also today's guest speaker and uh, regarding the endowment lecture <coughs> usually the speakers they have the very long experience more than 2 3 decades working on the uh, crops which are having the heat or is mainly area in which is working on the phenomics platform because main, nowadays many of the uh, physiologists uh, working on uh, new new generation phenomic platforms which have the more control system and also he is one of the person who is also working on this phenomics platform and working on the photosynthetic efficiency which is Uh, usually other complex systems as physiologists understand is easy so they are manipulating and nowadays uh, the manipulation of photosynthetic apparatus is the biggest challenge nowadays so i, I think he is going to throw light on some of the area and uh, regarding the our uh, the student other other disciplines uh, it is a right occasion to learn uh, from the physiologist how this how the system been manipulate, manipulated uh in the physiological mechanism in we altered what kind of crop 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 management wise and also uh, people working on uh, crop improvement do you want to biotechnologists want to uh, changes the crop by architecture or sometimes changes the photo system by we of uh, either other means like genome editing or any any other tools are genomic assisted Uh, breeding or many techniques people are adopting but everything is basis from the physiologist unless you uh, cannot understand the physiological basis whatever manipulation you planning at it may not work in the ground level similarly the agronomist and the people uh, in related discipline they work on the crop management definitely you should have the understanding on the system otherwise uh, you cannot it's difficult to get the results what you want to do so this way the this morning this lecture will definitely will throw light on the uh, different areas which can be applicable to other people like uh, plant breeding biotechnologies and also other management scientists so this lecture definitely help you uh, help us to learn the things i am also eager to watch your lecture and also many of the online participants also uh, people from other campuses uh, madurai or trichy and other campuses also like to watch your lecture and lecture also been archived so with this uh, uh, few th words i am really happy on behalf of vice chancellor of tamil nadu agriculture university uh, we really welcome you sir for this uh, today's evening lecture and also the tamil nadu agriculture university feel proud and high that's high such a high tenure in the physiological uh, research and come over here and deliver the talks and it's all will be benefited for our faculties and students thank you thank you very much respected dean school of uh, post graduate studies dr arun kumar sankar sir professor and heads my dear colleagues and dear students and all immense pleasure to have over alumni and my dear senior Dr. Arun Kumar Sankar sir, as guest speaker on this important topic here today, he is basically a plant physiologist on uh, working on abiotic stresses and has lot of credentials in his name. And let me brief some of them regarding Dr. Arun Kumar Sankar. He is serving as principal scientist plant physiology with Indian Council of Agriculture Research at Crida, Hyderabad. He is working with the ICR as a full. full time researcher since 1993 and has since earned his advanced degree in crop physiology from 
our own uh, university while in service been awarded the prestigious fellow of indian society of plant physiology in 2006 fellow of royal society of chemistry by royal society of chemistry london during 2018 and the fellow of uh, royal society and and he is an endeavor executive fellow of the department of education training uh, from government of australia and he has been awarded the commonwealth star by the australian government and also he is a plante fellow Society of Plant Biologists. He is listed in the top two percent of the world scientists for the year 2019, 20, and 21, and listed in the top two percent of the world scientists in the full career during 2001. I'm sorry, 2021 in a Stan Stanford study. He is presently working on systems biology approach to study the mechanism of abiotic stress tolerance in crops. His main focus is now. to unravel the mechanism of drought and heat stress responses in plants to tackle climate change related threats in agriculture he is a highly cited worker with more than 6000 citations from 52 indexed articles with h index of 29 his work on review on chromium toxicity in plants has been cited more than 2200 times he is serving as an editor in three high impact journals uh, namely frontiers in plant sciences uh, plus one scientific reports and in the editorial board of environmental and experimental botany he has won sentinels sentinel of science award for top peer reviewing awarded by web of science he has peer reviewed 300 articles in 52 high impact journals with this uh, brief introduction i conclude my uh, part and i welcome dr arun sir to deliver his lecture thank you thank you one and all uh, firstly i'd like to thank uh, the university uh, the vc and the dean pgs and the head of the head of the department of crop physiology invited me for this uh, lecture great opportunity to come back to alma mater and deliver a lecture because uh, all i have learnt is from uh, this very department and it uh, becomes a duty for me to give it back to the department it is really a great pleasure for me uh, now uh, i again thank you for having uh, given me the introduction uh, actually i my topic uh, i i have just uh, broadened my topic by it was a photosystem 2 topic but i have just broadened it a little bit to include more aspects uh, to make it more interesting for a more other uh, departmental uh, other interdis more interdisciplinary in nature so i have made it as a phenomics high resolution phenomics techniques for improving stress tolerance in crops uh here actually uh, the structure of the talk will be basically on uh, uh general uh, a general overview of what phenomics is in fact uh, in our institute that is central research institute for dryland agriculture we have a uh phenomics facility which is a state of the art and it is about uh, the uh, it is the only one or only some of the few that is in south asia and we also have a fate and uh, face facility in all of which we do a lot of phenomics then i'll i'll briefly deal about the imaging systems uh the spectrum in which we image and the physiology behind it and i'll 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 also tell you about high throughput phenomics which we, which is most talked about nowadays in research and its differences between uh, uh, high resolution phenomics which is the key area of the talk i'm going to give and the main uh, main um, uh, main uh, topic or main concentration of the lecture will be on uh, photosystem 2 dynamics then electron transport oxygen evolution in photosystem 2 then applications of high resolution studies in uh, uh ps2 in uh, stress tolerance this will be the brief structure of the talk so firstly i want to uh, tell you about how uh, the things are different from what it was before like when we are uh, when we are probing the plant that is our job is to probe the plant uh, as a physiologist we study mechanism and uh, actually our our uh, main aim is to see how it happens uh, like what happens is we know by seeing and we try to explain how it happens which is the mechanism and for that the conventional approach during my own uh, college days in uh, in the 90s was a slow dynamic approach that was slow dynamic in dynamic in its sense but it was very slow it was a dry weight destructive sampling approach so called grind and find approach it was and uh, that had several days like i'm telling you that had several days as use and use defined intervals for example if we have a crop uh, duration of 100 days or 120 days we could barely uh, take uh, 
three or four observation dates 2040 and uh, 60 days was maximum we could take because of the destructive sampling involved and uh, our plot size will be uh, just enough to permit us to take 12 to 13 plants where we will where we will lose the plants for our harvest so that used to be the system before but now with the advent of uh, uh, state of the art with that advent of imaging and robotics and phenobots the the modern technology is non destructive it's mostly by imaging we don't take dry weights here it's dry weight one dry weight of the plant can give you all the growth analysis we want but in case of uh, the modern approach that is a phenomics approach it is totally non destructive and image intensive it is all everything is about imaging we don't do anything but image we we take images of the plants in different wavelengths which i'll go in detail into and uh, different spectral bands and the most important thing is it is very highly user defined so much so that we can even take observations every minute like imagine the amount of data we can gather in a crop uh, of duration of 120 days if we take data every minute because the amount of uh, storage space is much less in in about 3 tbs we can store the whole video of a uh, uh, for 720p video i guess you know what is 720p 180p 720p video we can store the whole video of a crop growth period in uh, two two or three tera terabytes two tbs so the user definition is very very intense here so we we can actually have two crops growing like one uh, stressed and one uh, control crop and image it totally intensively and replay in a time lapse video in about 10 minutes and pick our uh, pick the crop which we need like if we have 10 uh, plants 10 genotypes we can image the whole genotype from seedling to harvest and we can run it in 10 minutes after your harvest is over after about 120 days crop we just take the file and run it in front of us and we just pick our genotype which performs better we can visually see there is nothing much in this uh, no not much of an analysis in this so this uh, this is the state of the art now and actually phenomics i am uh, making a comparison here with uh, what is often said in the movie industry that is uh, lights camera and action the lights basically here means electromagnetic spectrum where uh, that is the light we use for imaging and the camera of course we know we have uh, several different cameras high definition high uh, high resolution cameras and ir and near infrared uh, thermal infrared far infrared cameras and the action of course is our data analysis so now uh, i'll uh, basically what phenomics is it is a high dimensional uh, phenotypic output of an organism the whole uh, gamut of data in uh, an organism wide scale that is basically phenomics so uh, what we were doing before like in my own department during my msc days we were doing growth analysis most of the crop physiology students here would know very well about growth analysis growth analysis is um, Uh, your NAR, CGR, uh, uh, LA, LA, LAR, and all that. So that was the mainstay of our work. Like the main work was that by which we used to gain data about the plant. So we never called it phenomics. In those days, it was called growth analysis. And what we did there now it's re-termed as phenomics, and it's a high throughput, and it is a non-destructive. That is the difference. So it allows us to have a better understanding of the genotype and phenotype map. and uh, the pathways that connects the genotype to phenotypes this is the way we get into phenomics and this is the way uh, which uh, makes it very necessary as a complement to genomics genomics era was the 2000 um, uh, the beginning of the millennium when the human genome was sequenced that marked the uh, uh, peak of the genomics era now after genomics what we started to gain uh, full uh, um, genomic content like ge uh, genome sequences of almost almost all organisms i think about 170 organisms have been sequenced fully now but we have the sequence then after that what is the was the question so the post genomic era is basically of analysis of data bioinformatics of data and the phenomics of the data so phenomics we we need to know what it expresses itself as so here uh, i'm uh, i'll tell you briefly about the measuring systems that is uh, firstly we have uh, uh, i told you that light light uh, a broad spectrum of light and uh, uh, right starting from the uh, um, starting from the uv to uh, infrared so color images is color images is simply your uh, um leaf area the uh, images between 400 to 700 nanometers that the cameras your cell phone mobiles can take or any other normal camera can take anything we can see that is a uh, uh, from that we, uh, we 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 are able to get data on leaf area volume canopy architecture phenology 
then uh, senescence senescence in the difference between the chlorophyll color that is the relative chlorophyll content and in case of disease or uh, pathogenic or insect infestation uh, it is uh, pathogenic lessens or lessens or uh, lessens caused by insects and also cd yield and agronomic traits are the common things we can get from color images then near near infrared images is a different wavelength where we can get tissue water content non destructively that is we don't have to destroy the plant but still we get what is the water content of the tissue soil water content and we can get with that and far infrared imaging is canopy temperature leaf temperature and water use efficiency we can gain from that and chlorophyll fluorescence imaging that is what i'll be dealing in this lecture with now at present in detail i'll be doing it uh, that in from that we get the physi physiological machinery of the plant photosynthetic machinery of the plant and photosynthetic efficiency and uh, i here will be dealing with the high resolution uh, uh, imaging high resolution data gathering hyperspectral involves almost all of the spectrum and uh, hyperspectral can give you carbohydrates pigments and protein and uh, fourier fourier transformation is one of that where metabolomics i guess you must have heard about metabolomics where we get uh, we can quantify all the metabolites a whole a whole uh, plethora of met metabolites in the plant at one go and at uh, non destructively then isotope uh, carbon isotope uh, measurements where uh, transpiration efficiency and photosynthetic uh, efficiency and far thermal infrared far thermal infrared for uh, cell that is where the fourier fourier trans uh, transformation infrared it is called where we can get metabolomics now here uh, here is a small picture in which i can show you like i told in the previous slide that is a visible gives color morphology and geometry and visible the range is this that is 400 to um, uh 600 nanometers which we can see that is normal uh, visible uh, spectrum then uh, tir and uh, uh, long wave infrared and uh, thermal infrared where we get leaf temperature and conductance the uh, that is uh, it comes here and hyperspectral is a whole gamut whole uh, whole complete uh, spectrum fluorescence is Uh, fluorescence is uh, capturing the um, emitted photon back so this uh, this uh, this gives us a picture of what phenomics is conventional in fact phenomics itself has become conventional now this is what is conventional phenomics now and here is a new mechanism uh, very very novel mechanism i am uh, i'll tell you about just for information uh, for you people that is a positron emission tomography where we can uh, do real time imaging of uh, uh, transport processes in plants water transport and also um your uh, carbon um, assimilate transport that is real time you get a you you have a screen where you can actually really map the water going down or going up or the carbon uh, carbon ass assimilates uh, traveling in the xylem and phloem this is done by positron emission uh, basically it's done by supplying uh, 15 uh, oxygen that is radio labeled oxygen uh, water containing radio labeled oxygen is injected into the plant it is a positron actually 15 o is a positron positron is an antimatter it uh, the moment it encounters an electron inside the plant when you inject it it encounters an electron both of them uh, join together and annihilate that is they they annihilate and uh, gamma rays uh, uh, immediately produced when the annihilation takes place and the gamma ray is sensed this happens at every nanosecond interval the, the every oxygen 15 atom administered uh, given into the plant annihilates with uh, an electron and it gives a emits a gamma ray and it is mapped that is how this uh, positron emission uh, tomography uh, is done you must have heard of this in uh, medical terminology i i suppose you must have heard of this similarly we can do carbon transport by giving um, air bone that is air with carbon 11 isotope like uh, and the carbon captured from the air photosynthesis from the air the assimilate has got uh, carbon 11 which again is traced by uh, positron uh, electron annihilation this is a new technique which i wanted to introduce you to now uh, the the challenge we have in this sort of study is a challenge of scale spec uh, challenge of uh, Mm, what uh, temporal and uh, and spatial challenge like uh, a plant uh, uh, goes through uh, several several uh, stages of growth and some of the stages are much more important uh, to study than the other stages for example in maize if we are studying uh, tolerance we'll have to concentrate on anthesis silking interval so that is one stage so this sort of scale challenge 
temporal challenge and uh, time challenge is a big challenge we have to encounter uh, yeah. most of the tolerance mechanisms resource use efficiency are governed by this complex phenotypes and uh, they are difficult to assess an engineer and this phenomics study actually makes it much easier so they involve uh, like i said you it involves uh, dev- several uh, crop developmental stages with the multiple traits like several traits may be responsible for several tolerances and one single trait may be responsible for multiple tolerances and so the, we have to map each of them so this becomes a very complex study the interaction and also the interaction with the growing environment so th- this is where high resolution highly focused phenotyping comes into play where we can uh, we can overcome the challenge of space and also the challenge of organization of the plant biological organization so you uh, you i think you must have heard of high throughput phenomics high throughput phenomics is a rapid uh, robotic assessment of plant growth where we rapidly do automated systems totally automated systems collect data quickly very quickly and it, it is generally like i said in the in my first slide it is a non destructive method and uh, often it is used in plant breeding systems and genetic research where we have uh, uh, where we have a large amount of genotypes to screen like we have thousands of mini core collections and we want to know the growth pattern of it and uh, we want to just uh, eliminate about 50 or 70% of it so this comes into play uh, high throughput phenomics is much useful in this in this uh, scenario where we can have large uh, uh, plant populations can be done now uh, high resolution phenomics which is the topic uh, i'm going to concentrate on now uh, that is much different from high uh, throughput phenomics high resolution phenomics is uh, we deal only with a uh, smaller number of samples maybe even 10 or 15 at the max and uh, uh, of course when it is statistically okay and uh, it takes more time to work on it it is not a rapid one uh, even a single observation can take days and it is a very detailed focus analysis we get very high precision information high accuracy and uh, and very detailed analysis and this unlike uh, high throughput which is more useful in uh, the a- breeding area and uh, Mm, genetics uh, genetic area this is more into the physiological uh, basic science area where we we try to find, we try to arrive at uh, mechanistic data like how like i told you in the beginning we know what is happening in the plant if you don't water a plant it is going to wilt but how it is happening is what we want to know in physiology so this sort of uh, the high resolution phenomics gives us an idea of how it happens and what all uh, it sums up into is uh, trait discovery we need to find out traits which can confer tolerance to plants like for for example if you are if your study is to evolve a climate ready cultivar or a climate ready uh, or a plant which can tolerate stress drought stress then we need to get uh, we need to identify certain specific traits so some traits are already known but what we need to do is discover new traits this is where this is where high resolution phenomics comes into play that is we can discover traits there is a high potential of discovery here so now i'll come to the uh, main crux of the, my lecture so what i uh, my own study is on high resolution phenomics of photosystem 2 uh, this is the basic uh, I, this is the this is the energy diagram the top one is the energy diagram and the bottom one is the molecular diagram of uh, photosystem actually photosystem is a is a protein complex it is basically a interlinked like a multi subunit protein super complex and it is an enzyme the whole bottom one is an enzyme basically you i have picturized an enzyme the enzyme is uh, oxygen plastoconin uh, oxidoreductase so basically it it uh, it, it uh, substrates are oxygen or uh, plastoconin and it is an oxidoreductase enzyme so what i have done is i have actually probed deeply into this and not only uh, i have probed only into a specific area into this that is this particular area q a and q b so i'll be explaining this to you in detail in my few other slides firstly what i do is i study the electron transport from here and till q a to q b and after that i i don't study because the instruments don't support my uh, studies so what happens here is when the light strikes uh, when your light strikes the p680 p680 is the reaction center when light strikes it it goes it it gets into an excited state and uh, after uh, uh, it has to come down anything that is excited has to come down and it went, when it come down comes down it uh, releases its energy in four different ways so one of the one of the ways is 
heat transfer that is the, the excess of energy is just transmitted as heat radiative heat that is uh, and the other way is fluorescence it emits a photon back but the photon is of a slightly lower wavelength and lesser energy a different photon a photon is already absorbed by the chlorophyll and one of the mechanisms is give the photon back and the third mechanism is the most important mechanism by which our food is produced that is photochemistry there is charge separation takes place and uh, this whole thing this whole thing describes the photochemistry so photochemistry is where the energy is used for atp and nadp generation uh, uh, with uh, other um, aspects like first of all what happens here is in the next slide i'll show you this is more in detail of what i do that was the whole of the enzyme that is oxygen plastoquinone oxidoreductase this is the specific work i do that is from water splitting and qa to qb reduction the electron transport is between these two uh, um, uh, pigments is studied by me with protein molecules is studied by me that is with with instrumentation so what happens is water splitting and uh, most of you know that uh, most of you have read and most of you know very well that photosynthesis is the only process that uh, that supports that is a total uh, reason for animal and uh, animal life existence on the planet because food production is basically from photosynthesis we all say that if there is no photosynthesis there won't be any food very true but one of the things we ignore or we don't actually it is underrated unsung is the water splitting the water splitting here water splitting is this depicts the water splitting the oxygen we breathe is from the water splitting most of us don't uh, most of us don't give enough importance to the fact that uh, the first thing that happens in the photosynthetic reaction is splitting of water molecule water molecule is split into two molecules of oxygen four protons and four electrons and this oxygen is the oxygen which we see in the atmosphere so whatever uh, oxygen we breathe not only the food comes from photosynthesis but also the oxygen we breathe oxygen which which is life on earth is from photosynthesis process and this is this almost gives about 90% of the oxygen in the atmosphere but another word of caution here is that you must have heard uh, literature or in social media or uh, in uh, in other uh, um, blogs and stuff that trees are going to increase your oxygen uh, Uh, in the uh, in the vicinity but this is a myth actually trees don't actually increase your oxygen concentration the the fact is that if you are in the middle of sahara for example if you are in the middle of sahara desert or thar desert where are thousands of kilometers radius there is no single plant maybe hardly a few xerophytes are there but even there your oxygen is 21% and it is there the same as what it will be in the middle of Uh, Amazon in the in middle of Amazon where there are thousands of species and fully tree ca uh, canopy covered with uh, plants it uh, oxygen is going to be the same this is because the circulation model which we know that is wherever the oxygen is there the, the earth has got an atmospheric circulation model caution here so all the oxygen we get are not from the plants land terrestrial plants 70% of the oxygen we get are from algal photosynthesis and uh, phytoplankton and other microorganism photosynthesis taking place in the sea sea is almost more than sea occupies a lot sorry so that is where we get our oxygen from so now i'll i'll go ahead now so here now i am talking about high resolution uh photosystem to uh dissection of electron transport now i talked about qa and qb reduction and pheophytin that is firstly the reaction center uh, passes on the electron to pheophytin pheophytin is basically a chl chlorophyll atom it lacks the magnesium in it you all know that uh, chlorophyll has magnesium central atom of chlorophyll magnesium pheophytin does not have the magnesium it has two hydrogen at hydrogen atoms in place of magnesium that facilitates the transfer of electron to qa and qb so this this graph is a typical fast fluorescence kinetics graph which i get from my instrument i be, what i do is i'll i'll give you an idea of how i study the fluorescence like i have an instrument called pulse amplitude modulator instrument that or with which is fitted with led panels a small sensor which has got leds so i cover the leaf with a leaf clip for 15 minutes that is called dark adaptation when i dark adapt the leaf all the photochemistry in the leaf stops there is nothing happening in the night for example when there is no light there is no photosynthesis there is no photon striking the chlorophyll atom there is no uh, excitation energy there is no electron transport so i bring i do it in the daytime when i do it in the daytime it is taking place so i block the light with a leaf clip 
I stop all all the photochemistry in the in that particular one centimeter diameter of the leaf. Then I put my probe on that. I remove that block and I pulse light on it. The, the sensor has got some six or seven LED uh, pulses, which pulses actinic light, that is photosynthetically active light. And the moment it strikes the uh, uh, chlorophyll atom, the electron transport and the photosystem gets opened and the whole of the process starts. And like I told you, the three the three important processes by which the electron, uh, the chlorophyll atom uh, comes back to the, uh, from excited state to ground state, one process is fluorescence. Fluorescence is re-emission of a photon. This instrument, the moment it, it pulses light and it measures the re-emitted photon in terms of fluorescence. It, it measures it and this graph is the output of the instrument. This graph actually shows us that where the starting of it is when all the reaction centers are closed, that is in the dark, dark adapted leaf. And this India, the, the OJ, the second uh, um, peak, indicates that photochemical reduction of QA to QB, where the electron is transferred from QA to QB. So that takes that takes place. The, you just make a note of the time the whole thing takes place. In fact, photochemistry is the world is the fastest known chemical reaction that takes place in this universe. And it is it is so fast that it, it cannot be efficient if it is even a little bit slower than what it is. So the whole thing here, the first uh, step is 10 milliseconds. Second is two milliseconds. That is a reduction of QA. Then the reduced state where after the electron passes off, the reaction centers closes. So there, uh, this is 2 to 30 milliseconds. And the P is the last level where QB, the electron passes off and goes to cytochrome C and uh, photosystem 1 and uh, uh, it goes off to the light, uh, dark reaction. That I'm not going into. That is the last part of it. And one more thing I want to tell you here is you might wonder that why the, like I showed you the enzyme uh, Z scheme before, photosystem 2 is before photosystem 1. Why is the photosystem 2 named first and then photosystem 1 is named? Normally, you know, why you one would think that it should be PS1 and then PS2. That is because photosystem 2 was not discovered uh, before. People only, uh, before the 1960s and 1950s, photosystem 2, 1 only was thought to exist. That was the only photosystem. It was not named as 1. But afterwards, they found that a reaction, uh, another reaction by enhance, enhancement effect, that is, they found that there is another photosystem in itself. That is a whole reaction center which uh, excites at 680. And uh, they could not name it. Uh, so they named it as photosystem 2. But it was found that that is the energy level is much before. So the Z scheme comes before that. That is the reason photosystem 2 is always shown in the Z scheme before photosystem 1. Now here is a typical graph I, I get from my uh, instrument in my experiment. Uh, this is the OGIP graph, the graph I showed you before. Uh, and here, here is where we get, uh, uh, when we, uh, you can see here, it is uh, one of my studies on wheat at different uh, stress level treatments of drought treatments, drought and heat and combined drought and heat. You can see that control is on top, which you can clearly, uh, the three varieties, you can clearly uh, demarcate that. And below that is drought, heat and uh, drought plus heat. So the degree of uh, stress here, the degree of stress can be seen as Drought and heat is the most stressful one. Heat is a little less stressful and drought is a less, less stressful than that. Control, of course, is optimum. Now I'll go into photosystem. Now this I talked about instrument-based uh, acquisition of uh, data where we get quantifiable data in terms of numerics. But now there is uh, the advancement in this field is the problem with this is that heterogeneity uh, that exists in this uh, sort of study. Because uh, I take a 10, uh, 10 uh, millimeter diameter of leaf area and work on it. I dark adapt it and take my um, observations. Then I go to the next 10, uh, 10 uh, millimeter diameter. So the leaf itself will have about 10 like that, 10, 10, 10, 10 millimeter diameters. I see that when I do my experiment, there is a lot of variation between the adjacent 10 millimeter disks. So why this variation comes? Because of the time I take to go to the next one. There is so much environmental changes that is taking place that it is not instantaneous. I'm not able to measure the same instant in both my stressed and uh, control or in the same plant itself. So this is overcome by imaging. Imaging is just, it generates a whole image, a total image of the leaf in a fluorescent spectra. That is by exposing a bright flash of light and a saturating pulse, the reaction center's response becomes saturated. And the moment it is saturated, then uh, the cameras focus on it and, the day, and they extract meaningful data. And uh, this is known as uh, fluorescence imaging. Here you can see that uh, fluorescence zero and fluorescence max. You can see the difference between the uh, fluorescence uh, levels in these in these plants. 
I'll show you a small uh, uh, 30 second video here of how we do a automated fluorescence system. We have a chamber like this, closed chamber, where plants are kept. Our uh, and it goes into the um, actually it's an open chamber in a um, in a conveyor belt sort of system. This gets into the chamber. Now the chamber opens. It is totally dark. The chamber is dark, and this is and it gets dark adapted there. It is kept there for for, for some time. Of course, I have taken this video continuously. Now the moment it goes, there is an array of lights on top of it. Uh, LED lights of different wavelengths and I have a console in front of me where I can control the chambers at the speed of it and and also the duration of light I pulse. This is my control. The, you can see the pulsing lights. These are the pulse lights and there's a bright flash of light which was not captured by the camera and it comes out. This is how a fluorescence is measured and after this is done, the console will display uh, my uh, fluorescence data. So the next one comes. This is an automated system for uh, studying fluorescence in several plants at one time and the whole of the plant. It is unlike I take 10 centimeter disc. This studies the whole of the plant. Okay, now this is what I get from that uh, sort of uh, automated system. I get here the the numbers here are the um, pixel, each pixel. I can predefine a pixel from which I can extract my fluorescence data in the plant. I can take it from the whole plant and uh, I take a mean of it. I'll take on specific uh, places. For example, this is very useful when we study insect damage or pathogen damage. Now here, here I'm doing here. This is one of my experiments. Uh, actually done. Uh, I have used about four different types of fluorescence uh, uh, instruments to get my data. That is, a uh, uh, one is the this is a handheld fluorimeter. This is a photo sink which is uh, connected to the cloud. It it connects to the cloud. The moment I get data, it directly goes to the cloud. This is a PAM instrument. That is PAM is a pulse amplitude modulated instrument. This one is called monitoring PAM. This is what I told about one minute. It this is a highly efficient instrument. I, it is a very costly instrument and very rarely used. I think only about few labs in the world have this instrument. This is a this monitors the fluorescence continuously at user defined intervals every one second it will keep pulsing and it will keep uh, recording the uh, reflected photon and in that way i can uh, you can imagine the amount of data i get during the whole crop growth period if i am taking a if i am imposing stress for 5 days in 5 days i can get if i measure every 5 minutes i'll get about uh, 35000 data points so that will be a very very high precision and uh, very high quality data we can get from this monitor it is called monitoring pam this is how we do the pulses here. Now this is the uh, this is the set of parameters we get from the instrument. This is the high, uh, when we do this sort of study. It's very mathematical here, and uh, the uh, this is and uh, this is from our. You must have heard of Govindji. He was one of the persons who standardized these uh, methodologies. And this is the methodology I follow. A, a whole set of parameters and a lot of mathematics in this. This is how our data output looks like. Now this, uh, now when I impose treatments, I, I told you we're imaging. So uh, now to ascertain the imposition of my treatments, for example, I have imposed heat and drought treatments. So I have to uh, find out if my heat and drought has worked very well. You know, I can always do by uh, measuring so, so, so much uh, content gravimetric or any uh, neutron probe or TDR method, and also if what a content uh, RWC and all that, but that is a time consuming one. Here I just take a photograph uh, from my infrared camera. And I can map the temperature of every pixel in this photograph. Uh, here I mapped a few uh, spots here, four spots. You can see here that this one is a non stress control and this is a uh, uh, drought. This is heat and this is drought and heat. You can see the difference in temperature. This is a scale. This is the scale of temperature. For example, the red, red in the heat temperature, soil temperature is somewhere around here. And in the control plant, you can see that temperature is not gone beyond this. That is beyond it. 25 it is not gone. So there is a very clear indicator and a very simple method to uh, quantify your treatmental imposition. Now this is another graph which I have got from my. Uh, uh, elevated carbon dioxide study. I, I, we do a lot of elevated carbon dioxide study in, uh, um, in, in my institute, where we impose carbon dioxide and temperature gradients. We have 
tunnels or chambers where there are gradients of temperature. We have a long tunnel, which I'll show you a photograph later, where we have three different radiations, gra gradations of temperature within the tunnel. And there is a, there, similarly, we have three such chambers where three different concentrations of carbon dioxide is kept. For example, 550 uh, envisaged climate change uh, uh, carbon dioxide concentration and uh, temperature elevation. So this is a typical OGIP graph I get from my studies with uh, when I combine carbon dioxide and temperature. Carbon dioxide is actually not a stress. Carbon dioxide is a, is what uh, carbon dioxide is sometimes very useful for the plant when it is uh, going to for especially three C3 plants where higher elevate higher concentration is going to increase its photosynthesis. But mainly it is it is increased because the light reaction is facilitated. Uh, Rubisco is uh, Rubisco's oxygenase is uh, negated by this because there is more carbon dioxide oxygen oxygenase activity of Rubisco is reduced and thus we get uh, better uh, carbon production. But in this case, we I, in my study, I've seen some interesting results in pearl millet here that uh, elevated carbon dioxide and elevated carbon dioxide at first gradient of temperature are better than elevated temperature alone. That is, the study actually comes out with the with a preliminary finding. I have to do more in the work in this that the stress of temperature is mitigated by. Uh, excessive carbon dioxide, a few ppm higher carbon dioxide. So basically in climate change, what we see is temperature increases and carbon dioxide also increases. That is what we, uh, that is what is the first or the most common known effect of climate change. So here we see that some of the C4 plants, the elevated temperature, the stress cost or the damage caused by the, at certain degree, like 0.35 to 0.5 degree increase in temperature is mitigated by higher uh, PPM of carbon dioxide, like 550 PPM of carbon dioxide. Now here I'll show you a 30 minute real time graph. Re again, this is high, re high resolution real time graph I made with Python uh, uh, coding. Actually, this is uh, this is a graph where I have taken my uh, chlorophyll fluorescence data uh, between uh, like 45 to 50 days at very, very close user defined intervals. Like I told you about user defined intervals, morning, afternoon and evening. And I have taken in uh, the four control heat stress and heat stress plus water stress plans. So this is uh, imposition of stress, then uh, taking your uh, and continuously taking your uh, um, FV by FM, that is quantum efficiency reading and rewatering and recovery. Here you can see this, uh, this is a 30 second uh, video which shows uh, the the this play the this one is the time like here is here it shows the day das and time of the reading and this is how the readings differ and see you can see that there is a clear difference in uh, stress and after rewatering it it comes back to normal but the degree which which it comes is lesser in heat and than in heat and drought this is a novel method of uh, depiction of uh, real time uh, data now this is called the pipeline uh, diagram where I have depicted uh, a leaf model and a molecular model of my uh, studies uh, in uh, pearl millet. Actually, I work on pearl millet water stress where I've imposed water stress, heat stress and heat and water stress together. Then uh, I have uh, done uh, like this is the these are the basic results of uh, my high resolution photosystem 2 studies where I I have mapped the absorption like absorption of light then uh, transmission of light that is a tr absorption is uh, this is absorption this is transmission this is reaction center and this is dissipation so this is the leaf model and this is the uh, this is the um, membrane model and this is the leaf model and the leaf model you the clear thing you can see here is although this is a very complicated graph it beyond the scope of this one hour lecture uh, uh, the one thing i'll i want to notice is that here i have actually marked the close reaction centers we can get a quantifiable value of close reaction centers we can see clearly that the close reaction centers are much more much higher in higher stress plants as like as compared to water water deficit alone we see that water deficit and heat stress has got more close reaction centers and one of the main reasons for that is uh, like i told you about oxygen evolving complex oxygen evolving complex is impaired by heat heat impairs the oxygen evolving complex. In fact, the true mechanism of water splitting I talked about earlier is not known even now. We don't know exactly how it happens, although a, 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 a hypothesis exists. We have to an, to an extent we have know the mechanism. There is an S1, S2, S4 phase, which I won't go into now. And there is a, a manganese atoms involved in this. But this 
whole uh, thing is impaired by heat. And when it is impaired, the starting of the photosynthesis itself doesn't take place. That is the uh, P800. There is no electron pushed towards the P800. So in the first step itself, there is a problem. So there is a lot of closed reaction centers, increase in closed reaction centers. So what uh, we get, uh, the interpretations we get from these studies are that uh, phenomenological, phenomenological fluxes per, ex, uh, per excited electron decreases under stress and the performance index, that is a quantification of how a plant performs under stress. It is based on absorption basis, that is absorption of light basis and uh, antenna reaction center and electron uh, transport parameters contributes to this and uh, water and heat stress effects are more seen due to phenomenological, phenomenological energy fluxes. So again, like I said, these are the fluxes that are that are affected. That is absorption for cross section, uh, electron transport, tra trapping, trapping of electrons, uh, uh, so that the electrons are trapped by the molecules and not let freely away, and dissipation and uh, reaction center density. So these are the parameters which I can obtain from my uh, instrument, and these are the parameters that are differentially. Uh, affected by stress. Now here is one. Uh, here is the conclusion of one of our recent studies. Uh, in this, actually, we have found that what what happens when there is to the photosystem too as a whole when uh, there is water uh, water deficit and heat stress. This is a normal normal system where normal electron transport takes place and normal OEC uh, water splitting is take place uh, taking place by oxygen evolving complex. Electrons are transferred and no, and uh, optimum conditions. Now under stress conditions, firstly there is a damage to OEC. So electrons are not pushed inside 680. Then electrons which are already there starts to jam itself. That is the electron doesn't move beyond QA. Uh, the uh, uh, re oxido, re oxido reductase efficiency of it stops. That is one molecule is not reduced and there is a jam of electron. So there wh what happens is there is a traffic jam of electron transport. Then because of this there is a reoxidation. That is the reoxidation of QA is inhibited and there is non-radiative dissipation of absorbed electron more of heat is released than anything so chemical uh, the the photochemistry which i said was the most important thing that uh, is the result of excitation does not take place and more of non radiative dissipation in form of heat is taking place so this is what happens during stress this is the mechanism this is how uh, like i told you this is uh, what we get when we study how it happens now what is impaired like what is impaired is a primary photochemistry is impaired there is a negative charge. Sa charge separation is governed by uh, law of photochemistry. One absorbed photon drives the transfer of one electron. This is where stress reduces this output qualitatively and quantitatively. And our uh, studies here suggest that uh, water deficit stress is more detrimental than in terms of heat, in terms of recovery and uh, effect. So further, when we have to refine our hypothesis and go further ahead, we see that OEC is one of the considered one of the most sensitive components. So the loss of two uh, manganese atoms, that is the damage due to heat. So the possibility of uh, of uh, amelioration is there is one possible amelioration where I have myself uh, hypothesized with my team. Uh, nano uh, uh, nano magnesium nano ma manganese sprays. Nano manganese sprays is uh, is capable of uh, 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 the possibility of the manganese to enter into the photosystem itself and replace or the damage replace the damage or loss of magnesium. That is one hypothesis. And the other is fredoxin uh, uh, NADP reductase. That is the next step. That is I didn't go into it. That is between the photosystem one and photosystem two where there is a mobile plastic quinone. That is again uh, a hypothesis where we can measure the uh, assay the enzyme that is a um, uh, NADP um, ferrodoxin NADP reductase. Now this uh, I'll show you some photographs of my of my facility. This is the chamber I talked about. That is the CTGC chamber where uh, here uh, this this is the like this this each part like from here to here uh, this part will have one temperature. The middle part will have another temperature. The uh, the the front part, the part facing us will have another temperature. So three gradients we can maintain uh, as a difference of 0.5. Say for example, if it is a uh, 25.5, this can be 25, 26, 26.5. Like we can maintain it throughout the crop growth period. And also we we have maintained a, uh, a specific user defined uh, amount of carbon dioxide. Like here I am maintaining 550 ppm.
so this is one of my pearl millet experiments you can see that uh, you can see the growth of the pearl millet under elevated co2 here uh, i am uh, close to 6 feet and i am raising my hand and still you see that pearl millet almost it's it's come up to 10 feet 10 feet or 11 11 feet probably because the height of this is 12 feet here again uh, um, the uh, high throughput imaging uh, stressed one day to 24 hours at recovery and uh, Mm, uh, uh, stress imposition and recovery this is a, uh, unlike my other uh, infrared imagery this is a visible imagery where uh, uh, although the images are much small here but you can see still the differences in especially here during recovery that is a uh, 2 hours 31 minutes after rewatering and you can see after 24 hours you can compare the 0 hour and 24 hour and see how it has recovered and in fact we can take a video of this this is again ir ir imagery of my experiment and uh, so uh, in conclusion finally i want to say that what do what what we gain or what we understand and what uh, we can possibly uh, think about when we do high resolution phenomics of specifically photosystem 2 is we can understand the molecular mechanisms that are governing this responses to heat and uh, drought or any other stress for that matter in fact highlight stress is very much studied and uh, we can identify key proteins as i said that uh, the photosystem itself is a multi sub unit uh, protein super complex so we can identify several proteins and the genes governing it and its response to stress can be studied we can manipulate it in such a way that we can reduce the stress and we can increase then uh, we can study the structural changes spatial distribution and uh, in fact photosystem 2 sometimes is mobile within the grana it moves from one place to another that also we can study we can uh, we can evaluate the effectiveness of uh, mitigation strategies on uh, ps2 function and compare act, uh, compare uh, species comparison can be done genotype comparison can be done and uh, at varying and at varying levels of stress uh, get a, a good map of how this is affected uh, different uh, crop stage and uh, crop development stage uh, different genotypes or different species itself then uh, we can attain our targets that is the most important thing like I, uh, for example i said about manganese um, to mitigate uh, damage to ac uh, we can identify this uh, potential targets for improving stress tolerance in crop and uh, and furthermore we can refine and develop new technologies and imaging approaches for, uh, like high resolution phenotyping in response to stress now if you want more about me you can scan this uh, qr and get uh, uh, more, more about uh, my publications you can take a photo of this and get thank you sir you mentioned in a slide that the stress causes electron trafficking in the system sir and was there any mitigation strategy by the plant or how long this uh, effect of elect uh, tra electron trafficking persists yeah actually uh, this uh, uh, for example if heat was continued in fact i had my treatment in a system where there was a 3 degree to 4 degree increase in temperature ambient temperature uh, compared to control and if i kept it for more than 3 days my imposition of stress itself was for 3 days if my plant was for 3 more than 3 days the plant was gone it could not recover from that the traffic jam uh, totally stopped you should understand that this is so detrimental that the particular qa to qb which i discussed uh, is the target of herbicides herbicides may actually work in that place so any small damage to that the qa qb electron transport is stopped by uh, uh, paraquet and uh, some other herbicides so uh, that uh, uh, that is so effective that even a momentary or a few uh, like few hours of stop or stoppage of electron will the plant will die so uh, the recovery from this sort of a stress so i gave a very perceptible and a very high degree of stress to study the mechanism so definitely recovery depends on the uh, on the quality or or the degree of stress and uh, water stress i definitely saw there was a high degree of recovery good evening sir myself sharuk from physiology department sir you have shown a scanner at the starting is it lazy scanner sir no no tell, tell me what scanner at your PPT. hold your hold your mic uh. in, in your ppt you sh shown a scanner na sir scanner in, uh, scanner. in which uh, which slide second or third slide sir phenotyping phenotyping uh, yeah. no you you tell me which photo then i'll tell you what it is slide, slide sir two. slide 2 scanner total scanner like lazy scanner pet was it pet 
Yeah, yeah, sir, that one, sir. Second image. Ah, oh, this one. Yeah, yeah. This. Easy scanner, sir. What is? I don't. I don't get what scanner. What easy? What is it? Easy. L E A S Y. Feel phenotyping. Feel uh, this. This has all the cameras fitted in it. In fact, uh, this particular uh, this particular unit, na. I don't. I I haven't heard the name you told, but. Uh, is that it is available? Yeah, Ikris said it is that. This one I took in Austrian Phenomics. This 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 particular scanner, na. Yeah. This 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 can have all uh, cameras. It can have multiple cameras of our uh, TIR, uh, infrared. Measure uh, root length, sir. Root length, you have to have a different setup. because this is overhead it is measuring overhead root length uh, uh, i am not aware of any camera i i still don't know maybe there are but i have not done root studies at all is it immobile sir it is mobile see this platform here na this platform moves okay and uh, this is stationary i've got a video of that would you want to see i mean i think i'll have to browse and see no sir you said it is only available one or two places in south no Asia. this was not what i said the phenomic facility is available phenomic facility this is available this is also very rare to find you can't see many ikrisat is there then probably ou80 it is there and my doubt is sir if we implement this in drone we can yeah uh, you can you can but uh, is there see, any facility available in any idea sir in drones yeah see this is more robust in nature than drone because the uh, you you have more control over it and the the area itself this the whole thing is a big one which can hold several cameras high resolution cameras i don't know if drones can be fitted with so high precision instruments but although you can have different drones if you for example if you want visible only uh, you can have visible camera drone uh, i i have not heard till now about cam drones having Uh, multiple uh, uh, cameras with different wavelengths i don't know it's quite possible gradation ah uh, uh, one one in one chamber amma uh, actually uh, i'll go to that uh, slide uh, we have you must have seen on that doom this is a totally automated uh, facility it is see here these these things ella mel irukkalenga those are the ones which emit radiation adu vandu these are connected by uh, to a controller scanalyzer and controller ah adu move idu station inga stationary a irukku ah adu vandu enna na the change aagaga monitor panni panni thirumbi maathirum real time monitoring Uh, when uh, temperature slight change in the na the sensor will monitor and it will inform the computer computer that temperature has changed and the brightness of the ir will increase and that is maximum that is it. so in the level of perfection attain panna mudiyumo and the level we can do perfection there because a real time monitoring is even carbon dioxide also carbon dioxide kuda real time la it is not that it is going to be the same if a 550 irundadna morning 550 irukum evening 570 aidum but the moment 570 aagaaga the outside sensor will sense the 20 degree increase and it will pump it will remove carbon dioxide or if it reduces it will pump carbon dioxide so it is maintained at that uh, particular uh, uh, desired level by real time monitoring and adjusting the system all uh, controlled by a very elaborate uh, computer system that's what i showed my uh, pearl millet also that uh, this is one character because i grew seven or eight uh, uh, varieties and one of the varieties was tall that photo was indicative one it is not that mm, this is also but in general uh, we have seen that at 550 there is very luxuriant growth both c4 and c3 it is not that other than that is still remaining a question in dr varaprasad's lecture also i did ask him i said uh, how come a c4 plant is responding so much to uh, carbon dioxide and uh, moreover very importantly you know your your question la the context of my study my study is a photosystem 2 where carbon dioxide does not come at all into a picture it is only uh, light capture electron trans uh, uh, quantum efficiency Uh, carbon dioxide does not come uh, that also is increasing uh, he, how much ever can be the, how can quantum efficiency increase in uh, higher uh, carbon dioxide uh, concentrations that was one of the questions which also passed and uh, literature and discussion with a lot of people uh, says, uh, says that uh, my own uh, hypothesis is that there is a feedback like more and more uh, p and nadp synthesized and more uh, uh, 
carbon uh, carbon is fixed then uh, the plant itself starts to feed front uh, uh, increase in the quantum efficiency but that needs to be um, Uh, proved by uh, studying rub pace because light reaction i don't have the facilities in my lab to study light reaction has to be studied very in detail rub pace how much is uh, rub oxygenase um, uh, effect how much is carbon dioxide effect and all that but another thing uh, dr varpasad had told me was that uh, probably uh, pearl millet in the initial growth stages in the 20 ds or 40 ds varaiku uh, it, it it does not have crans anatomy itself abhi he says that it may have c3 like uh, structures and it will be taking place in a c3 sort of mechanism so that could be one of the reasons but that is much easier to study i can do an uh, uh, sectioning and find out the anatomy i am proposing i have to start to study that uh, for a closing system photo system one and two you are using clips for a different duration which duration is correct some of them are 10 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes uh, actually uh, this is thing when you start doing this work la i standardize that now when the uh, i close the id uh, for 10 minutes 15 minutes till half an hour 5 minutes interval kodutu then after uh, then i measure after that when there is no difference in the quantum yield i take that as a standard and other some crops la in a pearl millet la i have seen that 10 minutes la it uh, 15 10 minutes la quantum yield uh, stabilize aidum adukapra 15 minutes close pannala seri you close it for uh, more half an hour also it stabilizes so you have that for your uh, experiment and the crop also i think that is the relative electron transport rate uh, uh, but it is a reliable one or... actually i am not so aware of that i am not a derived parameter they are having some equations like let the e- see here also i have got etr uh, values i get values for uh, plastic non fuel etr uh, then uh, closed uh, the, then also that uh, the probability which which the electron can move to photo system one also is quantified in terms of number by this instrument it, it is all programmed in it all i have to do is that 10 second of observation download my data and uh, fix it into that uh, particular formula definitely it's reliable because i am seeing that my in experiments is very much in confirmation with what other uh, results are is reliable and pam la it is pam is much more uh, a much more sophisticated and a better instrument to work on in photosynthesis than a light a light in the id photo uh, instruments so pam walls walls uh, germany walls are clear na pam illa engitta na australia i have, i was having i worked in pam in australia only if i have hansatex hansatex kuda he irukku that is hand uh, uh, plant efficiency analyzer that is a that is an instrument only thing is people don't know what all it can give if you sit down in that instrument and do t- start working on it la it gives immense amount of data ipo vandu oru superficial oru student oda work na he does not have to go into this if he is taking up a thesis specifically on photosystem 2 then he can get enough data to uh, like what i have done for example i have now oru did i show my paper i don't know i, I have not uh, uh, whole work is on that only for me on the uh, so if you want to go deep into it you can go if you want if you want only your quantum yield and npq npq is uh, npq na touch point la in the topic la npq means that you can take npq and uh, forget it matlab you have got uh, so many you are studying your main area of something else you want to supplement your uh, results with uh, some fluorescence data which is what most of us do we people get into very detailed photo system 2 analysis and i got into it because i got into it is because my my conditions in the web lab was not so suitable for uh, things and uh, and it is a very very interesting topic you know when you go deep into it la it's more of biophysics involved more of and all that the i started to gain interest when i started reads and i went very much deep into it i started pa- reading papers which all photo system 2 in fact there is lab in indor indor la, there is one lady who's working she's done a very good work in that top indian work in the nature plants la yeah, la she's published no <laughs> no i have not in fact i uh uh-huh. 
எனக்கு ஈவன் நோ ஐ இன்ஃபேக்ட் எனக்கு ஐ எம் மோர் இன்ட்ரெஸ்டட் இன் தட் என்ஏடிபி ஃபெரிடாக்சின் என்ஏடிபி ரிடக்டிஸ் தட் தெர் இஸ் அ தெர் இஸ் அ மெத்தட் பை விச் வீ கேன் ஸ்டாண்டர்டைஸ் தட் கலரிமெட்ரிக் மெத்தட் இருக்கு அதை கூட பண்ண முடியல அண்ட் இன்ஃபேக்ட் ஐ ரெஃபர் அனதர் ஒன் இம்பார்ட்டன் திங் ஐ வாண்ட் டு ஷேர் ஹியர் இஸ் தெர் இஸ் அ சிம்பிள் யூவி விசிபிள் ஸ்பெக்ட்ரோ ஃபோட்டோமெட்ரிக் மெத்தட் ஃபார் எஸ்டிமேட்டிங் ஆல் த இன் பிக்மெண்ட் காம்பசிஷன் ஜாந்தோஃபில் ஜியோ ஜாந்தின் ஹோல் கம்ப்ளீட் யூ நேம் இட் all the pigments just by scanning at uh, from 1 nanometer to another nanometer or 10 scans if you do with that modern uv, UV visible uh, you can scan the automated scanning ana i have got that paper with me but still i am not able to work out how to do that it is very simple procedure so i might want somebody's help here in fact i talked to jani about it once long back uh, i'll share that paper with you if you can read it and if you can find out something like how he has done it in fact i want to write to the author and ask him step by step you tell me do <laughs> yeah little field also field also we have used we have a field uh, face facility uh, where open air that is unlike uh, chem it is not chambers we have an open air uh, carbon dioxide enrichment facility that also works in the same way it is a ring but small ring where uh, the the instrument uh, the sensor senses the real time uh, carbon dioxide changing due to wind speed and everything then uh, it pumps in and or uh, sucks out uh, carbon dioxide sucking out is a mechanism i don't know how it does but we rely on that because we see in the computer console we see output saying that at this particular instant if i go to see it suddenly i want to know what is the uh, carbon dioxide concentration na i can get i can get a graph of one hour uh, point 24 hours la every hour i can get a graph so much was there so much was there it decreased we increased it so much it is a very reliable one but very cumbersome to work with where maintenance is very high Mm. so it does not justify the amount of results we get and a lot of other things are there in that is it the uh, dark adaptation is always necessary for chlorophyll fluorescent imaging people are using light adaptation also oh, light we can do light adapted but uh, light adapted one again you know see your photochemistry is already taking place so light light adapted will not be so reliable but uh, you can discuss your results in terms of light adaptation when your drought also is light adapted so your control is also light adapted reading your uh, the treatment also light apo you can justify saying that you have imposed the same kind of but i if you are going to uh, fluorescence uh, studies it is always better to dark adapt and uh, since you asked this question in these chambers uh, i have actually done pre- uh, fluorescence that is i go to the my uh, chamber at 5:30 in the morning it is pre dawn is a natural dark adaptation for hours like ratri fulla it is dark adapted so those readings are also very interesting i am gathering my readings now i have not uh, analyzed but they are also very interesting so from ojip we can uh, know about the photochemistry of ps2 so other than potential trials we can study from uh, ojip data ojip actually gives you an idea of how uh, what is the stress uh, level in your plant see uh, ps2 photochemistry ojip is mainly chlorophyll a fast kinetics okay so it, it is it only um, uh, reflects your photo chlorophyll a and uh, in general ojip has got numerous applications one of it is rapid stress uh, quantification or identification of stress that is all ojip is that much only but if you go deeper into the ojip parameters then we can reconstruct the electron transport like i have done in this my particular study we can reconstruct the electron transport and point pinpointed the steps where the blocks are there or where where you can apply a mitigatory effect by doing by going detailed analysis of ojip because ojip itself gives some 40 parameters 40 uh, parameters you can get from ojip although the graph to see by seeing the graph you can see which is stressed but if you go into each and every data you can get at least 40 parameters from the ojip from the handheld uh, fluorimeter so we can reconstruct the whole that is why i call it i call it dissection of electron transport so ojip can be used to dissect the electron transport again with the caution that only till qa to qb after it goes to plastoconon pool cannot do because the instrument has not got the capability to do that thank you very much once again 
Uh, good evening to one and all present here. Uh, it gives me an immense pleasure to propose a word of thanks. Uh, at the outset, uh, I would like to thank our respected uh, Vice Chancellor, the vicinity leader, who is instrumental in organizing the endowment lectures, guest lectures across university, across departments. Every department is having endowment lectures, guest lectures. People from different departments and national level, they are coming over here and presenting a lot of uh, scientific discussion. So today you see a lot of discussion on that. It's very good. Thank you very much, madam. Uh, then I would like to thank our speaker, uh, Dr. Arun Kumar Shankar, uh, sir, principal scientist from Krita. Originally, he was uh, prepared for the session two. I was thinking how it is going to be useful for the uh, the audience from different department. Then till afternoon, he was that prepared. He was, pre he was preparing for, for that, and after afternoon, when he listened to the you know, type of audience, he could change it to phenomenal facilities wherein the, all the students can get benefit of it. And it was inspiring, interactive. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And I really thank uh, our uh, Dean SPGS for the financial and administrative support. And I would like to thank our data uh, crop management for uh, her available suggestions. And I would like to thank the professional heads from uh, Director of Crop Management for sending the, for sending the students for this uh, end of the lecture. And I would thank our person head uh, for valuable assistance. And uh, uh, last but not least, I would like to thank all the participants from uh, all the departments, students, staff from Department of Physiology, and online participants for the contributions and the participation. Thank you very much. Thank you.